albums of the year 2023. You know I couldn't do it by myself, so I have two guests joining me on the Foolish Bailey channel for today, where we are going to count down our top 10 albums for the 2023 uh, year. We're starting off with, uh, first of all, Cole from No More Fielders. Cole, how are you? I'm feeling uh, pretty good, pretty good right now. Cole, you're in a band, is that correct? I am, in fact, in a band. Uh, we are called Forest Isn't Dead. Uh, we're recording an album next year. Uh, we already have an album out, The End of Everything. Uh, please check it out, any streaming platform. And we should be touring to a town near you uh, next year in 2024. There will absolutely be links to that in the description. Now, can you confirm or deny that your band is named after Forest Wall? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that okay. is our favorite player uh, by far on, on the Braves. Um, best hitter on the team, actually, last year. You know, if you, if you really know ball. Well, I don't want to embarrass you, but we do have a Braves player here who is not Forest Wall. It is indeed oh. Spencer Strider uh, joining me I once wish I again was on. Wall. Well, we all wish we were Forrest Wall in a way. Uh, joining us uh, for the second time uh, to discuss some music. First time you're here, we ranked the Strokes discography. You used the famous Art Vandalay ranking system. Will that ranking system make an appearance today? It, it will be relevant at, at times. There are some some albums that I plan to mention that are so obscure and also so new to me that... that uh, they haven't had a chance to, to crack the board yet. So they're they're boardless, boardless rankings. Incredible. So so let me ask you this. If I'm linking, you know, an example of Cole's work in my video description, what should I link for you? Would you rather see your baseball reference page or like your Statcast baseball savant? Because I can link his, you know, streaming music. But you know, in case people aren't familiar with what you do, what should I send them? I feel like there's enough nonsense out there. You shouldn't just blame get google me you might come up with something um i i i don't know i'm not much of a i gotta be honest here on the record i'm more of a fan graphs guy fan graphs oh. or does does favor me it i will say me. it favors the favors the pitcher a little bit more mm -hmm. overall um i think uh, i think fan graphs is a good website go ahead and link my fan graphs okay so people can just check out your work you know yeah maybe go right, through go the ahead. game logs a little bit just you know see what you've been yeah. up to Okay. familiarize yourself just in case I'll, they're not familiar with your game in case they don't know who yeah. you are in case they only know who i am you know uh all right so so here's how we're going to do this we're gonna do this in a round i'm gonna give my number 10 album cole's gonna do his number 10 spencer's gonna do his number 10 and then we're gonna work our way for nine eight seven etc so my number 10 album of the year 2023 is blockhead the Ox. This is this is one of two hip hop albums I'm gonna have within my top ten ranking. It's not one I listened to up until uh, you know like a few weeks ago, and it is a producer album, which is to say Blockhead is the producer of this album. He makes the beats, but he does not rap on it, and instead it's just uh, uh, just a super team of you know who's who in sort of the underground uh, hip hop scene. And producer albums are hard to pull off because you have all these different voices coming in and out. It's hard to have that cohesion. There's always going to be tracks you like because you're going to gravitate towards the ones with the rappers you already know and the artists you already know. Um, but this one actually works really well. Uh, and, and Blockhead, the producer, sort of brings it all together. So that that is my number 10 album of the year. Uh, we will now move on to Cole for his number 10 pick. Awesome. And I just want to preface this by saying uh, this is the only band I would consider to be personal friends with on my list. Uh, they did not pay me uh, to put them on there, by the way. Just, you know, integrity is important to me. Uh, the band is Night, N-I-T-E. The album is Be Destroyed. Uh, we played a show with them in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They're uh, twins from Dallas, Texas. Uh, and basically think if Depeche Mode decided to make industrial pop music in the early 20s. Uh, every song is catchy. There's something to gleam on to. Uh, and even if you don't uh, feel like listening to this entire record, uh, you know, totally understandable. Uh, you know, you can put on your Olivia Rodrigo record. Uh, I won't blame you. But please, uh, I encourage everyone to check out their industrial cover of Alice in Chains' Wood. Uh, it's one of my favorite Alice in Chains' song, songs, and um, it's a great close to my 10th album of 2023. All right, Spencer, is your number 10 Olivia Rodrigo by any chance? It, it, I, it is not Olivia Rodrigo. Mm. And if, if it if somebody's was Olivia Rodrigo, I would I would judge you. Um <laughs> I don't I don't observe Olivia Rodrigo as a legitimate <laughs> um listening option. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. I don't like my chances. So here. that being said, 
Um, my number 10 is Bluebeard by the Brook and the Bluff. So Brook and the Bluff, um, great group out of uh, Birmingham. They, they're currently residing in Nashville, um, but uh, kind of a, like, a, like a very clean, um, just kind of indie rock sound. Um, this is their fourth full length out al- full length album. I think it's their, their most ambitious one for sure. Um, I, I think that their, uh, sound was very, um, consistent across their first three albums. Their, their third yard sale kind of took a little bit of a, of a, like a step in towards, towards like a, like a, a evolution of their sound. But then, um, Bluebeard got a little bit more experimental in a way for them. And, um, yeah, there's a little bit more variation across the album and it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, for somebody who I would consider myself a very big Brook and the Bluff fan, it was a sort of an acquired taste. It sort of wasn't what I expected right away from them, but um, up there with with all their albums, that their all their work is very good. Great is that is that on the big board or is that a board list pick as you put it? Let me let me uh, consult the board real quick. I think this is on the board. Sorry for the suspense here i know everybody's dying to know um, <laughs> waiting with i do not breath. have i do not have brook and the bluff bluebeard on the board unfortunately uh, i do have some others though and we will get there yeah yeah you just you just gotta let us know because that that was sort yeah. of what people got hooked on last time we talked i mean now right. i feel like at the all-star break you were doing a bunch of interviews that are basically just were hey what's the deal with that spreadsheet man <laughs> Why do you like music so much? What's wrong with yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you only like throwing the baseball? Why do you have other <laughs> right. interests? I uh, I know, I know some, it's a flaw of mine. I know some people who are willing to pay a top dollar to get a link to that board. And uh, one of those people were me. So just uh, <laughs> put that out there. I, unfortunately, I can't be bought. And uh, the board the board is going to stay secretive or semi-secretive mm-hmm. for uh, the foreseeable future. What if it. what if he gives one percent of the money to the Braves Foundation? <laughs> yeah, well, you would be in line with with a lot of other people who do the same. Okay, um, okay. So, all, all right, uh, works. We're we're gonna move on to my number nine here. My number nine is the album title is "O Monolith" from the band Squid. Uh, Squid are part of what is called the windmill scene, which I don't really understand what that means, but that includes other groups like uh, Black Midi and uh, Black Country, New Road. Uh, the other, those two have not released an album this year, although I'm a fan of both. Uh, Squid on this one, they changed up their sound. It's 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 a very like post-punk sound. Their, their first album sounded a lot like Talking Heads in some ways, um, but they still are a little formulaic. Everything is just sort of like building and building and building to this chaotic finish no matter what. And it's just uh, excellent musician musicianship. That's a hard word to say throughout. So my number nine, Squid, O oh, Monolith. Moving on to Cole. My number nine um, is Paramore's This Is Why. Uh, Paramore broke onto the pop punk scene, the mainstream pop punk scene of the mid aughts, and were one of the best bands along with Fall Out Boy and Pink at the Disco. And while both those bands, from a sonic perspective, swallowed themselves whole, uh, Paramore just continued to uh, explore uh, more sounds and really just expand their horizons while sounding more coherent. Haley, uh, Haley Williams released a album in 2020 pedals for armor i recommend everyone to check it out uh this album is pretty much a culmination of everything they've experienced in the last uh 15 years the guitars are biting and angular and if you want to impress your friends uh tell them that zach farrow is your favorite drummer put on uh, figure eight off this album and then just refuse to elaborate any further are you are you would you say you're a, a this is why or an after laughter type of guy this is why, definitely. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Definitive. Uh, Spencer Strider, your number nine. My number nine is uh, the album Dream House by an individual named J.W. Francis from uh, the the big city, the big the Big Apple. Uh, it's an even bigger city up there in New York. I've been there. I can confirm that. Um, but uh, yeah, J.W. Francis. Um, this album is. Uh, I would just characterize it as a lot of fun. Um, it's got uh, very upbeat. Um, melodies. It kind of it kind of sounds like hers. I don't know if anybody's familiar with the 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 Europe the, the late great hers, um, and uh, they have a very uh, kind of fast paced, um, you know, like a like a quick kind of like um, pop rock 
sound and um this this comes very close he's got good uh like variation in, in his lyricism and his uh his singing through, throughout the album it's um it's kind of a quick listen but uh very solid kind of a fun uh sound you don't hear a lot of way to go okay so so far we're over two on albums i've actually heard that are on your list spencer but this is great <laughs> This is what I was actually yeah. hoping for. I don't want to see too much overlap here because I think that's sort of a theme for this year is someone could come up with, you know, a top 10 list and another person could and there'd be no overlap between the two. Uh, Absolutely. With that in mind, we are now moving on to uh, number eight. My number eight is Genesis Owusu uh, with their sophomore album, Struggler. Uh, Genesis Owusu. Their first album, I think, came out a few years ago. I think it's called Smiling With No Teeth. Um, it was a big hit. Uh, definitely made them a star. And and, and I mean, Jesus Uwusu is totally a star. Charismatic, funny, can rap, can sing. Uh, and this is a great sophomore follow-up. I think of all the albums I have on this list, this is the act that I would want to see in concert that I haven't seen because it's just going to be a great show uh, every time. Uh, you know, some, it's a big mishmash of genres there's electronic influence there's new wave influence there's you know hip-hop and rap it's just a little bit of everything but it's a great album great follow-up so my my number eight uh genesis uwusu struggler moving on to cole my number eight is uh queens of the stone age with in times new roman mm. queen of the stone mm. age are mm -hmm. I, I i knew i was gonna get that reaction i'm i'm super glad because queens of the stone age one of my favorite bands uh, of the last 25 years, maybe one of my favorite bands of all time. And uh, they're long gone from the days of like clockwork uh, or songs for the deaf. But to me, even at their worst, they're still better than 90% of contemporary rock bands at their best. Uh, thematically, this is definitely their most cut and dry record. Um, but you still have standout tracks like uh, Opener of Scenery, uh, Paper Machete. Um, we have Emotion Sickness uh, as well as Sicily. Um, and, you know, if this is their floor, uh, it's still higher than most bands ceiling. Yeah, definitely one of the best rock bands of the last 25 or so years, if not the best. This was a uh, Queens of Stone Age in Times New Roman was a very clear honorable mention for me, a, a good return to form. I think Paper Machete is one of the best tracks of the year. Spencer, where do you stand on Queens of the Stone Age? Because you had a little reaction uh, there, too. <laughs> absolute enormous Queens of the Stone Age fan. Josh Homme is one of my uh, my favorite musicians um, and a very interesting character to, to follow the exploits of. Um, but uh, he, uh, yeah, he, he, he spoke quite a bit about um, just the what went into this album and kind of his personal um, journey to creating it and i, I find that that uh, kind of behind the scenes fascinating it's an album I, I put in my honorable mention category as well i i tried to uh keep my top 10 to more um debut albums or uh, sort of lesser known artists um that's more what i traffic in so uh but uh, i also have to mention jw francis dreamhouse is on the board Ooh. And I, I, do, I forgot to uh, mention the score there. J -D they're, they're, uh, or his uh, dream house comes in at 768, which puts it at, um, or excuse me, 785, which puts it at 81st on the board. So a top 100 score for, uh, for uh, J.W. Francis. I like to think of the board sort of score uh, on a, like a, it's comparable to a, um, like a Dave Portnoy pizza review. Okay, so if we're it. getting <laughs> we're getting up into the eights, like you need mm -hmm. to eat this pizza. If it's an eight, you need to you need to listen to this. You need to put it in your ears. Um, but uh, a seven is a very solid album on the board, and so he comes right in there. Uh, Spencer, you don't have to answer this question or say the name of it, but do you have a rate your music account? I do not know what that is. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're. I think yeah. Cole and I are both big on that, and I think you would maybe do well to translate some of those ratings into a rate okay. your music profile so that i would encourage you to at least check that out i'll have um, to give that you can be work. anonymous too you don't have to like link. yeah you i i if i were you i would keep it anonymous for sure yep. uh but uh we're gonna move on here to my what are we on number seven that's correct number seven uh my number seven album of the year is jesse Ware. i'm gonna give this the full uh pronunciation with uh punctuation that feels good uh, it is a disco album, uh, the follow-up to her 2020 uh, breakout album, What's Your Pleasure? She's been in the game for a while, but she really changed up her sound in 2020 with What's Your Pleasure? And this feels like a victory lap off of that. 
It's a great album in its own right. It has uh, what I would describe as luxurious production, uh, fantastic vocals. There's a couple Song of the Year nominees on this album, uh, specifically uh, Hello Love and Begin Again. It's a little inconsistent. There's some times where it kind of diverts from camp into just straight up corny, but it's just it's a very fun album to listen to. It's a very fun album uh, to dance to. Uh, So so my pick there is going to be Jesse Ware. That feels good. Awesome. Uh, my number seven is the Dirty Nil with Free Reign to Passions. Uh, this is a very personal pick to me. Uh, I first saw the Dirty Nil back in 2015 at a venue called the Wonder Root. It was a DIY venue in Atlanta. Unfortunately, it's closed down since. And uh, they pretty much were the band that inspired me to take music as a possible career choice. Uh, seriously, just seeing them do what they do uh, at this point of their career. I'm actually wearing their shirt right now, too, but can't really see it. Uh, at this point in their career, you pretty much know what you're going to get from them. It's uh, anthemic rock music, loud blaring guitars, but it pays respect to the punk ethos of the 1980s. Uh, so essentially, if, if Ian MacKay is your favorite member of Fugazi, then I do recommend giving this album a spin. All right. And then, uh, Spencer, we're on to your number seven. Yeah. So coming in at number seven for me is uh, an Atlanta group by the name of Trash Panda their uh, album pandemonium um and i think that it's one of the most uh, appropriate names for uh, the sound of an album is pandemonium so th- th- it's a very unique sound um there's a couple of tracks on here that are just like constant um playbacks for me toxic signs is the first track honey eyes second track is the eighth track um really really uh catchy um the bass lines i would say drive every song um, which is something I'm, I'm a big fan of is a, is a strong baseline. And, um, this is one of the, one of the albums that, um, if I can kind of gauge a, a similar interest in somebody's music taste, um, I've been throwing this at them and they've really enjoyed it. So I think this is a, it's a good listen. And, uh, for the Braves fans out there, this is an, an, an Atlanta, uh, band. Yeah, it's great. A local act. Have you had any interaction with Trash Panda? Have you been to a concert or anything like that? I have not, unfortunately. Um, you know, the, the the baseball schedule does not overlap very well with um, concerts, uh, unfortunately. But um, I did, I did uh, amongst the albums I have on my list, I have seen uh, Brook and the Bluff play. I saw them play recently in Atlanta. Um, and then I don't think I've seen any other groups. I've seen Queen of Stone Age before. Um, so I try, I try to get, uh, try to get out whenever I can, but to any of my, my interests, interesting artists. All right. We're going to move on with, uh, our number six albums of the year. My number six album of the year is young fathers with heavy, heavy. Uh, this is an album that hooks you right away. And there's a lot of genres at play here. I would say it's art pop meets African gospel music. It's just very rhythmic. Um, this is a Scottish group that's very well regarded in the United Kingdom, maybe not that popular here. And, and this is their first album in five years. It's just a really unique sound, really great album all the way through. It, it's one of those I don't really know what type of person I could recommend it to. But I think if you just listen to the first track, if you're not hooked right away, it's probably not going to be for you. And if you are, then then go ahead and finish out the whole album. But yeah, number six for me, Young Fathers, Heavy Heavy. Uh, Cole, what is your number six? My number six is Billy Woods and Kenny Seagull with Maps. Uh, while this album might not top the impact of 2019's Hiding Places, Billy Woods offers his cutting lyricism, which pairs uh, so perfectly with uh, Kenny Seagull's asynchron- uh, asynchronistic beats. Uh, it, it goes together like a, a certain pitcher's uh, fastball slatter combo. I just I can't remember his name. It's, you know, tip of my tongue. Um, but uh, amazing record. Uh, they have the occasional feature to change things up. Um, one marked difference between this album and Hiding Places is that Billy Woods has more of a stream of conscious, conscious type of delivery and approach to lyrics uh, compared to Hiding Places. So, you know, if you're a fan of that in your hip hop or you just like James Joyce novels, then I highly recommend uh, this album. Yeah, I know. I know hip hop, not your thing, Spencer. But I mean, Billy Woods is is one of the absolute best in the game, and I've been a fan yeah. of his for many years. And he has mul- he has multiple albums out this year that could be considered among uh, the best. Uh, so, with that in mind, uh, what's your next pick, Spencer? My next pick is um, 
something that uh, it's a group that I think can kind of appeal to uh, many different tastes. And that is TV girl, their album Ooh. grapes upon the vine, um, which is on the board uh, along with every TV girl project. And this comes in at an, a, uh, keep looking at the wrong thing at an eight, three, five. So this is number 26 on the board on, on Mr. Mandalay's board. Um, so a very highly regarded album. Um, they sampled a lot of gospel music for this album. That's kind of their thing is, is taking samples and um, creating their own, their own beats and sounds. And um, yeah, this is, this is a really fun one for me. I, this is something that I would um, feel comfortable enough that people would enjoy it. I'd throw it on in the weight room at times. And uh, it always got a positive response. I even, even some, uh, even Austin Riley and Matt Olson um, took to this and wanted me to, to put it back on when I left the weight room. So if that, if that tells you anything, this is, this is a pretty good album. I think anybody would enjoy it. Well, I think that my number five would be almost one I could recommend to Austin Riley and Matt Olson. And that's because it has some, some country, some Southern rock influences. And that's uh, 3D country from the band Geese. Uh, this is a group from Brooklyn. Uh, it's, a, it's a rock group. There's, uh, there's elements of Southern rock. There's elements of punk. There's elements of blues. But I would mostly compare their their music to... It reminds me a lot of like the Rolling Stones country influence songs like like Wild Horses. Um, and it's just uh, it's, you know, instantly likable. The singer has a uh, a very unique voice and really makes you smile. It's filled with a lot of surprises, but uh, it's absolutely one of my favorite albums of the year. Geese with 3D Country. This is actually their second album, but I haven't I don't even remember ever listening to their first album. And I, and I understand this one was kind of a departure in terms of the sound, but it, it's a it's a great album all the way through. Yeah, and, and on that note, my number five, uh, I think Austin and Matt would really appreciate. It is, in fact, Morgan Wallen's One Thing at a Time. No, mm. just kidding. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> my number five is Liturgy's 92696. Uh, shout out my fellow small YouTuber, Hunter Hunt Hendricks. She's better known as the lead singer of black metal band Liturgy. What's really great about this record is that you pretty much get out of it whatever you put into um, whenever you want to listen uh, if you just want a straight to the chase black metal record, uh, it will it will be that for you. But if you want to go deeper into the uh, meanings and philosophies behind it, uh, Hunter Hunt Hendrick, she's very transparent about her songwriting process and about uh, the meaning of each song. And, uh, you know, if you're not into black metal already, I don't think this album's going to win you over. But bands like Liturgy and Def Heaven prove that, you know, black metal isn't just uh, made by satanist and slightly racist people from norway uh it is in fact music for the people was was morgan wallen's 98 braves was that in play in the locker room because see that's a song about the braves which is great but it's also a song about the braves losing so here here's a here's a maybe a crushing um you know display of honesty from for me i have a difficulty identifying morgan wallen's music that's and fair. i mean no disrespect <laughs> to fair. him but uh, I know he's a Braves fan and I appreciate the support. It's just so far outside of my, my genre of interest that um, you know, it kind of all runs together for me. Um, I certainly don't want to come on here and criticize anybody's their, their art. Um, obviously he's, <laughs> he's uh, enjoyed by many people. So I feel like he's got enough support in the Braves clubhouse too. So yeah, um, I think he's pretty, he's pretty well liked. Yeah. Yeah. Not to say right. I dislike Morgan Wallen. I simply just don't listen to that. that genre that's the music. headline. Spencer Strider yeah. <laughs> dislikes Braves fan Morgan Wallen. Someone will run with it however they want. There'll be a New York Post article about it tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah. well, let's see. What what is your what is your number four, Spencer? Or sorry, or, Are we sorry, on number five. Four or We're five? on five. We're on five. five. I, okay. I'm struggling here. Numbers not my thing. No problem. My number five, uh, an album I'm very, very excited about. Um, Variety Pack by Mustard Service. So this is a group from the uh, great state of Florida. A um, couple of young men who uh, have crafted a pretty, pretty uh, interesting sound. Um, I, again, I would similarly to Dreamhouse by J.W. Francis. I think it's a fun album. It's very upbeat, very engaging melodies. Um, you know, kind of uh, similar to um, maybe like uh, a Boy Pablo or um, I'm just trying to think of some other comps for them, but. Um, yeah, re really. Uh, th I'd say all their stuff is pretty good. They're they're a little lesser known. They're starting to break onto the scene now. But um, this will be a good uh, album if you're you're looking for something in this genre, this indie kind of rock genre, to to sort of uh, 
wet your whistle on. And then uh, I think you'll find the rest of their discography pretty enjoyable. It's good to just have like a very approachable album on there. You just put it on any situation. You know, that's that's a good it's a good top 10 album for sure. Uh, my 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 number four is uh, from a group that's been around for a while, but I hadn't listened to before this year. Uh, this is from Nowhere with the album Nowhere Forever. Uh, this is a, a collaboration between uh, two multi-instrumentalists, uh, Louis Cole and Genevieve Artadi. Uh, I was familiar with Louis Cole a little bit. Uh, Thunder Thundercat famously has a song called I Love You, Louis Cole, in which he professes his love for his musical talents. He's definitely a musician's musician. It's very funky. Uh, and then and then suddenly it's beautiful. Uh, and I think what's kind of must watch for me, especially if you're you know watching this on YouTube right now, is go look up one of their music videos, which is basically just a live session of how they recorded the song in like some, you know, big like rented out house. And they're cramming, you know, 50 musicians in there to try to, you know, put the song together all at once. And uh, it's really it's really quite impressive. And in the very much, uh, you know, Spencer Strider indie music you know, spirit, uh, you know, one reason people haven't heard this album yet is because it's only been on streaming for a little bit. They actually released it on Bandcamp at first and you could just buy it. And that was the only way to get it for a few months there. So uh, my my number four pick, Knower with Knower Forever. So my number four, we do have the first repeat uh, between the three of us. And that's because I chose Squid's O Monolith as my number four. Um. (laughs) We are in a post-punk resurgence right now. Uh, this isn't your older cousin's post-punk music. Uh, say bands like you know Block Party uh, from the mid-aughts. Uh, this post-punk is a lot uh, darker, murkier, more complex, uh, similar to what we've seen from bands like Bauhaus and Gang of Four. Um, 2023 was a strong showing uh, from the post-punk genre. We saw albums from bands like Shame, uh, Proto Martyr, uh, The Murder Capital, but uh, you know, if, if the post punk landscape this year was the divi- was a division, then you know, call Squid the Atlanta Braves because to me they just ran away with it uh, with O Monolith this year, uh, and really they were able to expand on their foundation uh, that they set with Bright Green Fields in 2021, uh, busy guitar work, uh, strong use of brass instrumentation, uh, and they're able to pair it with just more like adventurous songwriting and. You know, even if you're not a huge fan of post punk, I would actually recommend this as a possible like introduction album. Spencer, you mentioned being a fan of uh, strong and hooky bass lines. Uh, they're all over this album and the previous albums that they've released. I will say though, you know, you said Block Party is, is not your, you know, th- you said Block Party is your older cousin's uh, post punk. That's that's just my post punk. So <laughs> I felt a little bit insulted, but uh, no, that's that's great. And also, uh, yeah, and obviously we have some overlap there. Uh, a great album, uh, Spencer. What is your number four pick for this year? Number four uh, is a album by an artist from Austin, Texas, Molly Birch. It is Daydreamer. Um, she is, uh, I, I think this album really, um, kind of was a, was a big step forward for her. I, I would say it's her strongest album, at least uh, in my opinion, and, um, has a, has a lot of, uh, diversity across it. You know, she's got some, some very good vocal range that she will demonstrate in certain tracks. Others are a little catchier, um, focusing on the, the core, you know, the chorus, the core product progression a little bit more, um, as their kind of appeal. But uh, it's 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 a very like kind of like '80s like a Kate Bush sound um, that uh, has the modern appeal uh, you get from like a like a like a sort of a pop uh, of today um, laced through it. So um, it's something I find myself kind of listening to on default when I can't think of anything else to listen to. Um, and more and more recently, it's just it, it it gets better with age. It's a fine wine of an album for me, uh, coming in at number four. Yeah, it's funny you bring that up because my my number three, I feel like definitely fits that that sort of fine wine description. I think this is an album that um, maybe hasn't gotten that much shine this year, but I think it's probably going to grow into sort of a cult favorite uh, the way that some albums tend to do with age. Uh, the, the artist's name is What Is Your Name? Uh, and the album is called My Name Is Ellipsis. Uh, it's an emo album. Uh, the artist, as far as I can tell, is for, is anonymous for the most part. We don't really know very much about them. I would compare it to early car seat headrest 
or Weather Day. Uh, it's noisy. It's new to me, but I do think it is an album that will will grow in in popularity in the years to come. And I would highly recommend it to anyone who who likes uh, you know those artists in that sort of uh, vein of music in particular. But yeah, that's my number three pick. What is your name with my name is? My number three might actually be the most mainstream album on this list. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, my number three is Lil Yachty with Let's Start Here. Uh, this was the most bizarre release of 2023 by far. Uh, a lot of people expected um, this type of album to release, but even when it dropped, a lot of us were doing a double take just to make sure that it was Lil Yachty. Uh, and his name you know, is on it. It is his album. Uh, he goes psychedelic. Somehow it works. Uh, the last song sounds like Radiohead's Pyramid song, and it works. Um, Spencer, uh, I see you're rolling your eyes a little bit, but you might appreciate some of the names on this record. We have uh, Jake Portrait from Unknown Mortal Orchestra, Mac DeMarco, Alex G, and both members of Magdalena Bay uh, all have writing credits on this record. Uh, you know, even if you're wow. not a Lil Yachty fan, uh, I still recommend checking this album out. Uh, it is a left turn if there ever was one no totally yeah, i'll this have is, to give that a look this is basically just a rapper woke up and decided to make a pink floyd album it's, it's yeah, it was yeah. a really surprising release yeah. and, and sounds a lot of like, people liked it sounds more like flaming lips than uh migos <laughs> right what a bunch of good names and cops you've 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 listed yeah. off yeah, yeah i think i think you out. sold them on it uh what what is yeah, your you number did. three my number three uh is is may, again maybe the best album top to bottom that this group has put out one of my favorite bands ever uh a river running to your heart by fruit bats um so fruit bats um been around for a long time it's really um the the, the project of eric johnson is the the lead singer songwriter uh his name uh there's been a lot of other members to come and go but um this one i think just has you know really the highest floor of it um you know it, it's kind of a folky um rocked you know it's sort of a midwestern sound to me um and uh this one has uh, some of the more um sort of substantive lyrics i think of, of any of, of his albums and um yeah like i said top to bottom it, it, it it's uh it's a, it's an enjoyable listen and i you know i think it's i've said it before but but i i really only listen to to music in album format i'm not a big playlist shuffler um and so i appreciate an album that's crafted uh, to be listened from top to bottom. And um, this one certainly is. So it's a, it's a definitely a, a high, high recommendation for me. Yeah. And I mean that I I've listened to quite a few uh, fruit bats albums, but I haven't checked out that one yet this year. So I will, I will definitely check it out. Uh, we're going to move forward with my uh, number two here. My number two is JPEG mafia and Danny Brown scaring the hose. And listen, we're all a bunch of gentlemen over here. We never use such language to discuss women. We, I would say this Foolish Bailey is a pro-women channel, first and foremost. Baseball second, women first. Um, if there's one criticism I could levy at this album, I'm not sure if this music would scare the hosts. I think, you know, they may enjoy this music. It's fun. It's upbeat. It's basically two extremely talented people trying to make each other laugh. Um and uh, yeah, it's just it, it says a lot about Danny Brown in particular and JPEG Mafia. This is the best JPEG Mafia album, and it's only probably the third best Danny Brown album because he's just that good. Um, and it is I will say it is a baseball album, although I do have um, a, one more bone to pick with it. Uh, Danny Brown says on this album, Hall of Fame from Stolen Bass, bitch, I'm Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle wasn't that big of a base dealer. You know, he he famously wrecked his knee very early in his career. So I think I would like to see a reference to maybe someone like Ronald Acuna Jr. Uh, in that place. You can figure out how to make that rhyme yourself, Danny Brown. But uh, yes, uh, uh, JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown. Uh, did they scare the hose? I don't know, but they made a good album. Oh, man. Okay. My number two is a Feeble Little Horse, a Girl with Fish. Uh, this might be a weird sentiment to say about an album that I have ranked so high, but I might actually like the idea of this album more than the music on it, even though the music is still excellent. I mean, even without what I just said, it would still be like number three or four. Uh, Feeble Little Horse, one of my new favorite alternative rock bands uh, around nowadays. Uh, basically, it's what music would sound like if it was in a Dr. Seuss novel or Dr. Seuss book. 
uh, songs will change up on you without much warning. The guitars don't always sound like guitars. Uh, it really just plays by its own logic. But at the end of the day, it's still highly accessible. Uh, they're, they're still just simple little pop songs just with a bunch of uh, bells and whistles. And um, it's just a very satisfying listen, has its tender moments. And I'm really excited to see what this band does throughout the course of the 2020s. And it's my number two album of 2023. Yeah, Spencer, that's one I can easily recommend to you if you haven't checked out already. I'm, I'm sure it's probably I'm on your familiar, radar. Very familiar with this album. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yep. I, we're, yeah, we're I, I enjoyed it. I, I kind of agree with you. I think your your explanation was very uh, uh, very fair. I think we're about to find out this is your number one album. But uh, <laughs> uh, moving forward, I was going to say 120 on uh, Art Vandalay's. No, right. not uh, quite. Uh, what What is your number two album? My number two, uh, another one of my favorite groups, um, an album I was greatly anticipating when it came out uh, in the spring or early in the summer, uh, and that's Bunny by Beach Fossils. Um, so the lead member, Dustin Passore from uh, from Brooklyn, um, this uh, he was touring and, and with with as as Beach Fossils with um, Post Malone at one point this year. Uh, um, so I, I am, you know, happy for the people who wandered into that Post Malone concert and then found themselves listening to some Beach Fossils. Um, just really uh, thorough um, sort of Northeastern rock. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, very spacey, very deep, um, great bass lines as well. Um, you know, this is one you can kind of, uh, I, I love to listen to this album, like on the bus, in a car, in, a, in any type of moving um uh, you know, space. I like listening to this album. It just, it just, um, sounds like travel to me. Uh, this is on the board. This is, um, coming in at an eight, one, four, 49 overall. So, uh, again, if, if we're comparing this to Portnoy pizza review score, this is an, this is a pizza you, you want to try. You need to try this pizza. This is a pizza for everyone. Well, we've made it to number one, this is these are the albums of the year from the three people you'd probably want to hear it from most uh, a baseball YouTuber, another baseball YouTuber and a baseball player. That's who you come for, you know, in terms Experts. of the music journalism. Yes. The people who really know yeah. what they're talking about. This is about. a YouTube. This is a YouTube channel. So the, everybody here knows exactly what they're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> and no one would ever not know what they're talking about on the Internet. That's not allowed. That's correct. Uh, my number one album of the year is George Clanton. Ooh, rap, aya. It is lush. It is dense. It is, there are big singles. I think the biggest sort of way I would describe it, it's sort of like 90s trip hop, if you like that kind of sound. Uh, just to, but it, even if you don't, it's just a great, layered, dense, pop album uh it's very much in the uh indie music spirit george clanton is the uh head of his own independent record label 100 percent electronica uh which is a big reason why this was actually his first full solo album in five years because he's a guy who's you know not just uh making his own music but helping other people be creative uh and it's great all the way through uh it is my album of the year moving on to cole with his album of the year all right so if you told me earlier this year that I would be saying these three words in front of uh, my favorite pitcher, I would tell you, shh, you were scaring the hose, which is my album of the year. Uh, I pretty much agree with everything Bailey said about it. It was highly anticipated uh, when it was announced. And to me, the it pretty much checked off all the boxes and then some. Um, I do agree, though. Uh, I don't really think it scared many hoes. In fact, I saw JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown and the the girl to guy ratio was um, a lot was very surprising to me. Um, to me, it's both rappers at the height of their powers. Uh, it's funny. It's chaotic. Uh, it's really good workout music, too. And I think it's a really good sign that every song from this album made it into my uh, top 100 of the year. So, you know, go Danny Brown, uh, go JPEG Mafia and go me uh, for for hitting the gym enough to make this album relevant in my life. Yeah, I know you're probably sick of that one because Austin Riley's playing it in the locker room all day. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, trust us when we say it, it is indeed a, a good uh, hip hop album. What is your number one album of the year, Spencer Strider? Or, and, and can I ask also, does this align with what the Vandalay Big Board says as well in terms of the year? This does. This does. This comes in at number 11 on the entire board. Wow. Um, this is an album that uh, highly anticipated for, for myself. 
um, and the small contingents of or contingent of people who actually know who this is, uh, it's Norm by Andy Schaff. Um, so a Canadian, a uh, a storyteller, um, a phenomenal musician. So his albums um, lyrically are constructed in sort of a story or a narrative. Um, and it can be a bit cryptic at times, but that's, that's one of the appeals to it. And, and like I said earlier, um, you want to talk about somebody who writes their music to be listened to in the album format from track one to, to the end, it's Andy Schaff. Um, and that's, I, I think what makes it so appealing to me, um, not just that the, the music is enjoyable to listen to and the lyrics are interesting, but, um, that it, it really is like a movie. You, t- you turn on an Andy Schaff album and you, you, you lock in for the duration, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so this, so the narrative, I guess, this is a short version is this, this album sort of follows, um, it gives three different perspectives of a, a man pursuing a, a woman or a love interest. And um, those three perspectives are kind of different. One of them is, is actually supposed to be God. One is, is, um, is himself. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a very interesting album. And, and, and it's one that every time you listen to it, you're going to find um, a new reason to like it. So number number eleven on the big board eight nine five. So I mean a pizza that you you need to eat you need to eat urgently. You might even travel to to this place just for this pizza. Mm-hmm. That's how good this is. Can you can you give us the breakdown on the categories just just while we're here? You know what what's our what's our album art score? What's our impact score? Just <clears throat> yeah. You know. So for Norm, um, we're we're looking at a cover art of nine for the album album uh art um the music is at a nine five nine so just i mean you know b- b- wonderful music uh and I, I think that's correct i think it's, it's the highest of any of the andy schaff albums that we have ranked um he's got two albums with with music scores in the nines but but this is far and ahead the best one uh cultural personal score this comes in at 9.1 um this album was very highly regarded by uh, other music um publication you know, websites like Pitchfork. Um, I, I think, think this was his most ante- um, and uh, the lyric score is at a nine. So it's also the best lyric score of any Andy Schaff album. I, I can't, I can't recommend it enough. My favorite track is the title track Norm. Um, but I think, uh, like I said, it, it's really not an album. You, you seek out the, the singles or the, the top tracks. You, it, it's, it's served best uh, whole. Absolutely. Like, Hey, like a pizza, you know, sometimes you can't just have one slice. That's correct. Yeah. All right. We're going to, we're going to wrap this up. I really appreciate y'all, you know, coming uh, on today to discuss your albums of the year, but I'm going to leave you all with sort of a opening in question that you can feel free to interpret however you'd like. I'm going to ask it to Cole first and then Spencer Cole, was this a good year for music? I think it was a strong year and I know we've, alluded to this where maybe the depth of releases this year wasn't high but the breadth was uh to me you know whenever people ask my most controversial music opinion i always say that music is as good now as it's ever been uh just because the accessibility of uh being able to record you don't need a full studio to do it and you know we just get to hear so many different voices and you know you can argue that it's oversaturated but to me uh you know, everybody has a voice and the fact that, you know, you don't need a million dollar budget to be able to uh, express that is something uh, really beautiful in, in my opinion. So I would say a good year for music, six out of 10. <laughs> uh, okay, Spencer, same to you. You don't have to rate the year on a one to 10 scale, but was this a good year for music 2023? I think it was a very good year. It, 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 I wouldn't say it, it, uh, fell short of my expectations, but there were certainly um, some some projects and some artists I was looking forward to hearing from that that I didn't I got a little bit, but not but not what I wanted. Um, there was some hope that maybe uh, the second full length Still Woozy album would be coming at the end of this year. It sounds like it's going to be a 2024 release. Um, we had a, a single and a phenomenal single by Remy Wolf called Prescription um, that I would I would say is an indie anthem. Um, probably my favorite song of the entire year. Uh, from a band who absolutely needs to start writing some more music, or I'm going to find them and 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 threaten them to do so. And that's uh, the symposium. Their single, "The Only Thing," is one of my favorite songs, if not my favorite song from this year. Um, I, I think there were a lot of of excellent EPs and single releases, and I think just some of the some of the 
the artists I was, like I said, I was most looking forward to hearing from. We didn't get a full project from. And um, I think 2024 is lining up to be uh, a very good year for, for music, at least indie music where I traffic. Well, so hopefully Bailey, 2024 is a great year for all of us, you know? <laughs> we should turn the question on to you. Did you think that this was a good year for music? I, I, I think it was I think it was deep. And I think the thing that I most enjoyed about this year, and Spencer sort of alluded to it with uh, one of the themes on his list, is there were so many debuts and new artists that I that I wasn't familiar with because, you know, some of those highly anticipated artists or those artists who, you know, as soon as they drop an album, I have to listen to it, didn't necessarily release something this year or maybe only released a single. So uh, I think it was a great year for for music discovery in particular. And, uh, I, you know, when Spencer reached out to me about this uh, a few weeks ago, I said, that's great, but I need to listen to some albums. So a few albums on this list, I probably only listened to in the in the couple of weeks since. And, uh, so it's been a, a good journey for me. So, yes, I would say, you know, maybe for me a little bit lacking on the top end, like, uh, you know, there there weren't that many truly mind blowing, you know, listening experiences for me. But but the depth and and just a, a great year to sort of, uh, you know, introduce yourself to, to new artists and maybe even new genres that you previously uh, wouldn't have listened to. And I hope this video will do that for some of the people watching. They'll say, hey. I've never heard of uh, Andy Schaff or Norm, but that's Spencer Strider's album of the year. Let me check it out.